Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can create your own custom view of folders in your Outlook mailbox. To create custom mailbox views, click the View tab within the ribbon and then click the Change View button in the Current View button group. From the drop-down menu that appears, you can then select the Manage Views command. At this point, a dialog box will appear on screen. It is called the Manage All Views dialog box. It displays all of the available views and their associated settings. Here you can select any view that you want and then modify it or reset modifications made to one of the selected views. You can also create, edit, or delete your own custom views that you have created using this dialog box. To create a new view, click the New button to the right of the dialog box. That will open the Create a New View dialog box where you will type a name for the new view into the Name of New View text box. Below that, select what type of view you want to create. Table, Timeline, Card, Business Card, People, Day, Week, Month, or Icon. Once you have selected your base folder view, select who will have this view available to them. This folder visible to everyone, this folder visible only to me, or all mail and post folders. Then click OK to launch another dialog box where you can further customize the view. This dialog box is called the Advanced View Settings dialog box. The dialog box has seven buttons that you can click to set options for your view. Based on your base view type, however, not all of the buttons will necessarily be available. Clicking the Columns button launches the Show Columns dialog box. The first option is to set the maximum number of lines in compact mode. Click the drop-down arrow and choose a number from the list. Next, you can use the Select Available Columns From drop-down list to choose which set of fields you wish to see appear in the left list. To move an available field into your new view, select it in the left list and then click the Add button in the middle of the dialog box to add it into the list at the right. You can then select the field from the list at the right and reorganize its position by selecting it and clicking the Move Up and Move Down buttons until it is in the place that you desire. Click OK when you are done adding and organizing the columns within your view. Clicking the Group By button launches the Group By dialog box. Checking the Automatically Group According to Arrangement checkbox will lock out further choices in the dialog box and attribute generic settings depending on the arrangement of your items. To choose how items are grouped, uncheck this checkbox. This will open the first drop-down under Group Items By to select a field in your view by which you can group the items within the view. Note that this is usually only used for the table style view as it will group the same values in the selected field or fields into expandable and collapsible groups within your table view. You can select up to four fields by which to group. You can also set whether they will be grouped in ascending order, meaning A to Z or 1 to 9, or descending order, meaning Z to A or 9 to 1, by selecting the desired sorting option at the right end of each grouped field. To change the fields you can choose from, select an option from the Select Available Fields From drop-down list. Choose the Expand and Collapse defaults from the labeled drop-down list. The options are all expanded, all collapsed, and as last viewed. When you are done here, you can click the OK button to set the grouping for your view. Clicking the Sort button launches the Sort dialog box. Here you can use the drop-down available under the Sort Items By, and then by sections to indicate by which fields you want to sort the view. You can sort by up to four fields and they can be sorted in either ascending or descending order by selecting the appropriate option at the right end of each field. When you are done here you can click the OK button to set the sorting for your view. Clicking the filter button launches the filter dialog box. This dialog box consists of four tabs messages, more choices, advanced, and SQL. You click on the tab that you want to use to set criteria that will include or exclude certain items from the view. On the Messages tab, you can choose criteria that will allow you to filter by various common email fields. On the More Choices tab, you can choose criteria that will allow you to filter by assigned categories, message statuses, message option settings, and other more advanced filtering possibilities. On the Advanced tab, you can use the Field drop-down to select from any of the available fields in Outlook that you want to use as a filter. Then use the Condition drop-down to select a comparison condition, and if needed, type the value to which you want to compare the field's value into the last text box. Then click the Add to List button to add it into the list above. Clicking the SQL tab allows you to create a statement using structured query language to select which items you wish to see. You can do this if you are familiar with how SQL is used within the Outlook application. 
When you are done creating any filters necessary for your view, click the OK button to set the desired filters for your view. Clicking the Other Settings button launches the Other Settings dialog box. Here you can adjust the font display for the items in your view. The content available here will change depending on the style of view that you are trying to create. Make any adjustments that you want here, and then click the OK button to apply them to your new view. Clicking the Conditional Formatting button launches the Conditional Formatting dialog box. Here you can set new rules to apply a default formatting to items that meet a given criteria. There are some rules already in place in this dialog box, and you can add more. To add a new rule, click the Add button at the right side of the dialog box. It will add a new rule to the list. Type a name for the rule into the Name text box, and then click the Font button to set the font formatting that the item should use when the condition that you are about to specify has been met. Click OK in the Font dialog box to set the font. You then click the Condition button to set up the filter that, when met, applies the formatting that you just selected. You have the same choices available here as you do when you set the filter for the view. After setting the filter, click the OK button to apply it. Then click the OK button again when finished setting your conditional formatting. If using a table view in Outlook, you can click the Format Columns button to specify a display format for each field that you have in your view. Just select the name of the field whose display you wish to modify from the available fields list at the left side of this dialog box, and then change its settings at the right side of the dialog box. When you're finished, click the OK button to apply the changes to your view. When you are satisfied with all of the view settings, click the OK button in the Advanced View Settings dialog box to return to the Manage All Views dialog box. You will now see the name of your view shown in the list of views available within the dialog box. To apply your view, just click on its name to select it from the list and then click the Apply View button at the bottom of the dialog box. You can also select the name of the view from the drop-down menu that appears when you click the Change View drop-down button within the Current View button group on the View tab within the ribbon. Note that if you want to modify a view that you have created, you can select the name of the view from the listing shown within the Manage All Views dialog box and then click the Modify button at the right side of the dialog box. In this same area, note that you can also select the name of a custom view that you have created and then click the Delete button to delete it if you will no longer need to use the view. When you have finished using the Manage All Views dialog box, click the Close button at the bottom of the dialog box to return to the Mailbox folder view. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.